So I spent about two weeks with the Acer Nitro 5. I've done some benchmarks and gonna have my overall thoughts on this laptop and then get into the performance benchmarks here in just a little bit. Now this is the i5 12500H and RTX 3050 Ti with 16 gigs of RAM and a 512 gig SSD. So it's a great start. And the coolest thing about this is you can actually add a hard disk drive and a solid state drive to the, what is already configured here in this laptop. While, during, while I was doing my unboxing, I flipped open the bottom cover and I saw that you could add two hard drives. I thought that was awesome. So the expandability of this laptop is great. You can also swap out the two RAM sticks in the bottom to upgrade your RAM configuration. So the upgrade path on this laptop is excellent. Now, one thing that I didn't really love about the laptop was my fingerprints. As you can see here, I haven't had this long and I already have a ton of fingerprints on it. And even when I try and wipe it off with a nice soft cloth, it still just seems to hang in there. So if you're somebody with oily fingers like myself, then the Nitro may be something you want to avoid possibly. Now, something that I think is also weird, and this is just might be a total cork, is both of these names, so Nitro and Acer, they go different directions. Maybe that's just like a weird personal preference, but I find it odd that whether I look at my laptop this way, it says Nitro, but if I look at it this way, it says Acer. But if I open my laptop and somebody's sitting you know, behind me, like yourself, you see Acer and then like Nitro is, is upside down. I just, I think it's just a weird, it's just weird. But then again, when you open the laptop, it says Acer Nitro inside. So I guess that makes sense. But when I just open it, I'm like, that's, that's odd. It's just, just one of those quirky things, I guess. Okay, before we get into the laptop though, here's the weight and thickness coming up on the screen for you. It's a heavy package, kind of on the thick side, but it is a budget-friendly laptop. It's around the $900 price point. And if you're curious about the exact live pricing and availability, you can check the links in the description below. Of course, if you do make a purchase, I'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. The ports and connectivity on this laptop are pretty good. Not amazing, but they'll get the job done. You get a network port on the left side, USB type A and a headphone jack. And then on the right side panel, you get two USB type A's. And on the back of the chassis, you have the HDMI as well as the USB type C and your power adapter. So good connectivity, but nothing outstanding, so to speak. So there's no SD card reader. You don't have multiple USB type C's. Just kind of gives you the basics of what you need. Now going ahead and opening and closing the lid is really simple, easy to do with one hand. And then the screen flex, there is some, but it's not as much as some other laptops that I've reviewed in the past. So I wouldn't be too concerned about that. I like the hinge configuration. I think it's very strong and smooth. It doesn't bounce too much. It does have a little bounce, but then it settles down really quickly. So when you go ahead and you're typing on your keyboard, it doesn't get too bouncy. It stays nice and still. Speaking of the keyboard, I like the keys. They're almost kind of this soft plastic material rather than like hardened plastic, nice and quiet. Uh, the one thing I'm not fond of would probably be the the third shift key, the two third shift key rather than the full shift key. I'd rather that they've given me um, some small arrow keys and giving me the full size shift key, I would have definitely preferred that. You can easily jump into the Acer Nitro Sense command center to change your fan speeds and all that. Very easy to do very quickly. Um, so I like that option as well. So next thing we're gonna look at is the speaker quality. I'm gonna give you a quick sample of the audio experience coming out of the speakers. This does have a webcam, so I'm gonna give you a quick sample of the webcam here on the laptop as well. This is the webcam on the Acer Nitro 5 and a little audio sample for you as well. And lastly, I did talk about the keyboard. One thing I will say is the trackpad's a little on the small side for my personal preference. Uh, I did a head-to-head -head review between this and the HP Victus. The HP Victus just has a little bit larger of a trackpad and I like that a little bit better. But here's a quick sample of me using the keyboard and trackpad so you can hear how that sounds. Now the battery life results on this laptop are as expected for most 
Intel equipped laptops. Not great. It had maybe the mid six to seven hundreds for productivity tasks and streaming video. And then you get into Photoshop and video editing and it just drops down lower as well. So if you're somebody looking for battery life, if you can find a Ryzen version of this laptop or another laptop that will give you a little bit better battery life, specifically the HS series processors. Something like the Ryzen 9 5900HS or the latest 6900HS. Intel has great performance showing off in some ways better than Ryzen this year. And so if you want performance, I'd go Intel. If you want efficiency, I would go Ryzen. So just keep that in mind. Now let's go ahead and jump into the performance benchmarks. When you're looking at this laptop, know that this is a budget-friendly laptop and it's not gonna match a lot of the laptops with say the RTX 3060, 3070, or 3070 Ti, okay? It just doesn't have the power behind it to really be the beast After Effects or 3D modeling laptop that you might be hoping for. However, if you're somebody who's working in Photoshop or Premiere Pro or DaVinci Resolve, this will be a great pick for you. Let's go ahead and head through the benchmarks so you can see what I'm talking about. First and foremost, let's take a look at Geekbench single core, multi-core, Cinebench R20 and R23. So if you look into these charts, you can see it performs at more of the bottom of the charts for most of these tests. And that is to be expected. We're comparing it to some higher performing laptops. So I just want you to see where it falls in the category. Now, these laptops are priced at double or even triple the price of this laptop. So if you're like, okay, I want that type of performance. Just know that you're going to pay for that type of performance. So I'm just trying to give you a glimpse at the chart here. If you're only somebody who has about a $900 budget, this is a fantastic performing laptop. But if you have more, I wouldn't try and short your budget to try and think you're going to get the same performance because you just simply won't. This is a great laptop in its category. Looking at Blender, it's a program that wants a more powerful GPU. So if you're somebody who wants to do a lot of Blender work, I'd recommend the RTX 3060. If you can find it equipped in this laptop, this would be a great pick or the RTX 3070 for Blender. So if you're somebody who's gonna be using 3D modeling programs, After Effects, or Blender, I'd recommend trying to find this laptop, the RTX 3060. It'll just give you that extra punch that you need to work efficiently in those programs. However, if you're gonna be somebody in DaVinci Resolve or Premiere Pro or Photoshop, this laptop has what it takes for each of those programs, specifically for 4K video editing and most all of the Photoshop workflows that you're gonna be using. This laptop scores a 772 inside of Photoshop, which is plenty of power for the most common tasks that designers, photographers, and digital artists use inside of Photoshop. Looking at video editing, 4K footage has zero drop frames. So you don't have to worry about any issues with 4K video editing footage. However, if you're looking at 6K B-Raw, you're gonna have about 14 drop frames at full quality, not bad at all. But red footage, 6K is gonna be very heavy and I would not recommend this laptop for red footage. It's just a little too beefy of footage for this laptop to process very smoothly. Now, looking at export times, this laptop had good export times out of Premiere Pro and out of DaVinci Resolve, so you're not gonna have any concerns there. And looking at the thermal temperatures, you can actually run this in quiet or performance mode for really good thermal temperatures. I would not necessarily go up to default mode as it's gonna put you in the 90 degrees Celsius range, but if you need to, you can, but it really wasn't that beneficial to get a faster export time. So really performance or quiet mode will be great for this laptop. Now, if you're curious about the exact pricing and availability, again, links are in the description below. And if you do make a purchase, I'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. Comments and questions. I'm really curious what y'all think about this laptop and if you're considering purchasing it. Otherwise, likes if this video has brought you some value and subs if you don't want to miss out on the future uploads. I'll see you here in the next one.